Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Dance with Capital Athletics. This is part one of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. And joining us now, assistant coach Andy Winters. Coach Winters, thanks so much for joining us here today. Big news uh, coming out of this weekend, uh, an unfortunate loss for the college basketball world. Uh, former North Carolina head coach Dean Smith passed away on Saturday night. 11 Final Fours, two national championships, a guy that has been hailed as a great innovator of this game and a better man as a coach. Uh, your thoughts on Dean Smith? You know, being uh, a younger coach, I've kind of looked up to him even though I didn't get to see him coach as much. Um, you know, obviously the coach of Michael Jordan uh, in college, I read many books on him, so uh, it, it's sad news. He's he's a legendary coach. Um, he's one of those coaches that I, I, I still want to learn more about. Um, but, but what he did uh, at his time at North Carolina um, and kind of paving the way for that style of basketball is fun to learn about. And and, and it's good to good to see ESPN doing um, kind of taking memory of, of a whole day for Dean Smith and, and talking about him and, and kind of reliving his glory. We go from one legendary coach to another. I'm sure you heard in the news, Dixie Jeffers passing Otterbein's Dick Reynolds for the most wins by an OAC coach, male or female. You work at the same institution as Coach Jeffers, and obviously uh, I, I've come across so many people that not only love her as a coach, but love her as a person. Uh, your thoughts on Coach Jeffers achieving this latest milestone? Yeah, uh, you know, when I first got here, Coach Jeffers was the first one to kind of welcome me. Um, in wins or losses, she's, she's a great person. Um, she cares a ton about you know the university, um, and it's great to see someone like her achieve such a great milestone, um, especially being at Capital. Why she did why she did it? I was able to kind of share in in, in this year's accomplishments. Um, I'm very happy for, her, um, and I'm excited to see what other records she'll hold. Um, she continues to coach. I think she's got plenty of she coaching yeah. there, so the so the numbers should continue to climb right. and climb. We're winding down the season here. Uh, just a couple more home games left. Uh, less and less home games for the seniors. We got four seniors this year, and Adam Blake, Andrew Boca, Ben Danhoff, and Daniel Oki. What have these seniors meant to this program as their careers continue to wind down here at Capitol? You know, this senior class had the chance to be uh, the winningest class in school history. Um, they've won already won two conference championships. Uh, some of the fifth-year guys. Um, and the four-year guys have won one already. So um, for them, you know, being younger guys and, and kind of keeping the tradition of capital alive um, and understanding what it takes to be play at a championship level, um, and they've done a great job helping, uh, you know, the freshmen and the sophomores kind of uh, understand what it takes to get back to that level. Um, and, and while it's not showing on the court right now, they're, they're in the locker room and they're, you know, working hard and maintaining uh, maintaining what it takes um, for those younger guys to keep believing in the program. Let's talk about the recent stretch here. 80 to 76 loss to Mount Union, 85 to 73 loss to Marietta, 65 to 63 loss to John Carroll in the last three games. That's the creme de la creme of the OAC. And if Marietta doesn't go bonkers from three point range, I think that game is much, much more closer than it ended up being. What do you take away from that stretch? I know moral victories is uh, you know a bad curse word in the you know the, uh, the coaching vernacular, but uh, the team has been playing a lot better as of late. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of it has to do with um, you know being the top three teams in the conference right now and competing with them. It gives us a little confidence going into uh, the final stretch. Uh, we wanted to be the best team of the second half of the year, um, and we still have a chance to do that with four games left, um, but. You know, playing three good conference teams um, and uh, kind of following the game plan, uh, we did a great job of, of um, hanging in there and giving ourselves a chance to win, and I think that's important building in to hopefully playing in the OAC tournament. We're talking with assistant head ba uh, basketball coach Andy Winters here on the first half of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. Let's talk about the recent stretch here. You have Muskingum coming up this week, home game, and then you go on the road to take on Arbonne. These are two teams that you lost to earlier this year, so I assume that you want to get these teams back, you want to get back on the winning side of things. Let's start with Muskingum. What challenges do they present? Um, you know, going up to Muskingum, uh, we were trying to get back on track. I think, I think the biggest thing for us right now is, is continuing to follow our game plan. Um, you know, m many teams, we worry about matching up with them and doing, I think if we just play capital basketball, 
um, and continue to build on these past three games, I think we, you know, we'll be okay. And then the game against uh, Ottervine, big rivalry game. Mm -hmm. uh, people were fired up when they came here to the Capitol sure. Center, I'm sh and I'm sure that stung uh, when the, uh, they lost to the Cardinals uh, earlier this year. Big payback uh, uh, game uh, coming back on Saturday, I assume. Yeah, there will be a lot of emotion, especially for those four seniors that we mentioned. Um, I think you know the biggest thing is continuing, um, you know, continuing to uh, play within ourselves, even though it's a big rivalry game. Uh, each team is capable of doing anything on a rivalry night. So uh, just playing within ourselves and, and controlling our emotions um, and going out and having fun. We always like to end every interview, by the way, with the random question of the week. President's Day weekend is uh, coming up, uh, Coach, uh, so it has a little bit of a presidential theme. If you were president for one day, what would you enact into law? What would you change if you were the head man of this country for one day? Head man of this country. Uh, I'd make basketball the national sport instead of baseball. National pastime. Yeah. Okay. Pastime. okay. I'm starting to change it from baseball to basketball. No, I, okay. So. Okay. I like. Well, hey, you you are a former basketball player and a basketball coach, so that would make sense. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. That was assistant coach Andy Winters joining us here on the first half of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. Coming up, we'll be talking with senior center Andrew Boca on part two of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. In the meantime, for Capital Athletics, I'm Charlie Danis. We'll see you next time. Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Dance of Capital Athletics. This is part two of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. And joining me now, Senior Center, Andrew Bolka. Andrew, thanks so much for joining us here today. No problem. So, I understand you're from Xenia, Ohio, and unfortunately, Xenia has been known for a lot of tornadoes That's over right. the years. Uh, any memories uh, involving tornadoes? Have your, has your family been involved in any of those big ones over yeah, the years? Yeah, in 2001 actually, um, our house got affected in my parents' bedroom. Actually, got totally, totally wiped out. And then in 1974, my dad's house uh, was actually totally gone. That has to be tough to go through a dramatic experience like that. And people just continue to live there, I guess. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it, I, I guess when you, when you live there, you know it's a risk you take. But, I mean, our last one was 2001. So, I mean, that's been, what, 14 years since. It's actually been a long time. Yeah. So, who or what introduced you to the game of basketball? Um, I have to say my, my mom did, for, mo for the most part. She played basketball all through high school, uh, and she played a little bit in college. And then she, I mean, I was always playing on a little tight hoop in my, in my basement with my mom and dad, my grandparents. And then once my little brother was born, I started playing with him a lot. And then I always had little neighbor kids around I always played with. So, I mean, I, I was always pretty active, not only in basketball, but in pretty much all sports. You're, you're a post player. Yes. What led you to become a center? Uh, I, I, had a, I had a kid named Ben Person who played at Ohio State. Uh, I always played basketball with him, and he was always like really big. He was like six eight when I when I was smaller, so I used to play with him a lot. So I worked my post moves with him, and also I was always taller. I was I've been six foot five since eighth grade. Wow! So I was always just pretty much just thrown to the post. Describe for me what senior basketball was like back in the day. What are some of your biggest memories from high school? Um, let's see, my junior year we we won the conference championship, and that was awesome. Then my senior year we unfortunately lost to Wayne in uh, in overtime. Uh, when they had Travis Trice, who is a Michigan State player now. Uh, unfortunately, we, we lost them in overtime. That was probably my biggest memory. I wish we would have won that game. The recruiting process. I'm sure that a lot of schools were coming after you. When did you first hear about Capital? Um, I think my, probably my end of my junior year, I was just looking at a lot of schools. and Some schools made contact with me, and I, I had a visit here my senior year. I really, really liked the location of the campus, not only with the basketball aspect of it, I think I chose Capital mostly just, I like, the, I like Columbus, I like the opportunities in Columbus, you know, because I want to be a physical therapist. There's a lot of uh, those places I can get internships, things like that, so that's why I chose Capital. How big of a role did Coach Damon Goodwin uh, play in your recruitment? Uh, I, I liked how straightforward he was. A, a lot of other coaches, I mean, they'll, they'll tell you things, but he's very honest with you. He'll, he'll tell you exactly what he expects from you, and he, there's no nonsense with Coach, so I, I like that about him. Your favorite basketball player? Oh, uh, favorite basketball player. Hmm. As of now, I, I like watching Blake Griffin play. Mm -hmm. uh, he he's very athletic, and I like to model my game after him. I, I liked how how he moves and stuff. But now now that he's kind of moved out from the post, he was shooting a lot more. I don't really do that a lot, but I still like watching him play a lot. We're talking with senior center Andrew Boca here on the second half of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. 
Uh, Andrew, no way to show Dakota. It's been a tough season. 5-16 and 16 overall, 3-11 and 11, uh, to this point in OAC play. You had a recent tough stretch. Close losses to Mount Union. If Marietta hadn't gone Gonzo from three-point range, I think that game would have been a lot more close. And then a two-point loss to John Carroll. Uh, I know that uh, there are no such thing as moral victories, but what do you take away from that recent stretch? Uh, those, those last two games, especially Marietta and John Carroll, uh, we're, we're gelling a lot better as a team. I, I think from here on out, we, we should we should win out and have a really good run in the tournament, uh, especially John Carroll. We really played well. Uh, we, we handled their pre pressure great. I'm not sure how many turnovers we had, but it wasn't it wasn't very many. When it came down the stretch, we just didn't make the plays to win. But from here on out, with, with Muskie, and we have Heidelberg, Otterbein, and then um, Baldwin Wallace, and then to finish out the regular season, I think we should have no problem winning all those games. Well, let's talk about the upcoming week here. Muskingum, mm -hmm. team that uh, beat you earlier this they year. Did. What they stands did. out about the Muskies? Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're athletic. Uh, they have a couple of really good players. They have a really good guard that we need to, need to watch out for. Uh, but other than that, the way we've, we've been playing, we should be able to handle them, I think. And then a rematch with Otterbein. I know it really stung uh, when they came oh, yeah. into the Capitol Center and beat you guys. I'm sure you guys are really looking forward to that game. Oh, absolutely. That's one of my favorite games to play, and especially my last ever Otterbein game at, at Otterbein. I hopefully, hopefully we can take, it and take care of it. So you alluded to it earlier uh, in this interview. You're an exercise science major, mm -hmm. physical therapy. You want to be a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. Now, why? Well, uh, my soft, my freshman summer uh, playing basketball at a camp, I actually uh, hurt my ankle, and I had to, I had to have surgery. I was out all my sophomore year, so I had to have a lot of physical therapy, and I really, really liked uh, the aspect of my physical therapist helped me with the mental aspect and also the physical aspect of how to get back and be able to play again. So I think that's why I wouldn't want to do that and help other people. This is your senior year, your last year here at Capitol. I'm sure you've had a lot of great memories, a couple of OAC titles throughout your tenure here. At Capital, uh, what are some memories that stand out for you as you approach the final weeks here of your basketball career? Uh, there's, just, there's just so many things that, that stand out, uh, not only with basketball, just the friends that I've made on the team, but definitely with the basketball aspect my freshman and sophomore year. We had, had some great teams, had some great players. My uh, freshman year, we went to the Answer the Way tournament, which I never thought I'd be able to experience. That was definitely an experience of a lifetime for me. Uh, just playing throughout, I really enjoyed playing here. Uh, just have, having having good coaches, having a good program that had to model me for as not only a basketball player, but to, when I leave college, the man I want to be. So I, I, re I really appreciate that aspect a lot. We always like to end our interviews, uh, Andrew, with the random question of the week. And this week it has a little bit of a presidential feel to it with presidential weekend coming up uh, here. If you were president for one day, what would you enact into law? What change would you make? Oh, wow. What change would I make for one day? Hmm. I, I really want to have uh, like healthier eating places. So so for one, for one day, if I could, I would make like uh, I don't know some kind of like fast food place that's only healthy food. This open twenty four seven. Okay, that's what I would do. Hey, that would help. that would help with the obesity problem that yeah, we have in this absolutely. country. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. No problem. That was senior center Andrew Boca joining us here on the second half of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast for Capital Athletics. I'm Charlie Danis. We'll see you next time.